All right, welcome back. So uh, in this example, we're uh, asked to find the area that is bounded by the absolute value function and the function, the straight line y equals x over 2. So once again, we go to Desmos, and uh, I'm coming up with my graph. Uh, I can see that the blue graph is actually, or purple graph, is actually always on top, uh, and the green graph is always on bottom. Uh, there is a little bit of a problem here, though. Absolute value, uh, there are two different parts of the absolute value graph, and we're going to have to address that when we, when we deal with the integral. But we can see that it starts here, they cross at x equals 2, and they cross again here at x equals 6. So let's first just paste in this graph here. Uh, and get that out of the way, first of all. So there's our graph. And we notice that if we draw in kind of a little sample rectangle, as I just mentioned again, as I just mentioned again, that the purple graph is always on top. So that it is always going to be the graph y equals x over 2 minus the absolute value. But there is a little bit of a problem. There is a little bit of a problem. And the problem here is that this absolute value graph changes its equation because absolute value is actually a piecewise function, recall, that absolute value of x is actually two pieces. It's x when x is greater than or equal to zero, but it's minus x when x is less than zero. So it does two different pieces. And that means absolute value of x minus 3 is going to be the same thing. All right? It's going to be the same thing. Uh, absolute value of x minus 3 It's going to give you x minus 3, right, stuff inside, when that stuff is positive. When that stuff is positive. When x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0, but x minus 3 will be greater than or equal to 0 when x is greater than or equal to 3. So when x is greater than or equal to 3, then we'll use that formula, and that's for this part over here, from 3 to 6. Right? We're going to be using that part of the absolute value equation. But it's the opposite of x minus 3 when you're less than or equal to 3. We'll just say less than 3. It's going to be the opposite of that stuff. And so that will be for this piece right here. And so because absolute value being piecewise, we do have to actually still set this up with two different integrals. Good news is uh, these integrals are going to be a lot quick, a lot quicker to evaluate than the problem that we did earlier with the sine and cosine. Uh, it's going to be a much quicker process. So let's go ahead and find that area now. Let's go ahead and find that area between those two curves. So for the first part, it's going to be right here, this piece, where we're using the left-hand wing of the absolute value. Okay? And that's going to go from 2 to 3. And then we're going to have this second piece, where we're using the right wing of the absolute value. That'll go from 3 to 6. Okay? So now at this point, we set up our integral. Set up our integral. Area will be the integral from 2 to 3 of the top function, which is x over 2. And then that's going to be minus the left wing, which will be minus the negative of that stuff, which will actually make it plus x minus 3 dx, and then plus the integral from 3 to 6 of x over 2 minus the right wing 
which is just the x minus 3 part. And then at this point, we just need to work out uh, these integrals. So uh, do whatever little bit of simplifying I can do first, and then we'll do the integrals. So here, I can add the x over 2 and the x, uh, which will give me 3 halves x minus 3 dx. And then here, the integral from 3 to 6, uh, if we distribute the minus sign through, that's going to be x over 2 minus x. We'll make that minus x over 2. And minus the minus 3 will be plus 3. And then we just go through and we compute. So we do our integral. So for 3 halves x, we add 1 to it, which will make it x squared. Divide by it, so that will become 3 fourths x squared minus 3x. That's going to be evaluated between 2 and 3. Plus, and we do the same thing over here. Add 1 to it to make it x squared. Divide by it, so that will be actually uh, negative 1 fourth x squared plus 3x, and that's evaluated between 3 and 6. And then at this point, we go through and we do our computation. So we go ahead and we just do our computation. So plug 3 in, 3 squared is going to be 27, or 9, times the 3 will be 27. So I'm going to have 27 fourths, and then minus 3. Uh, times 3 will be minus 9. That's the first part. We then plug 2 in. That's going to be minus. When we plug 2 in, 2 squared is 4. Times 3 fourths will just be 3. And then plug 2 into the second part, it'll be minus 6. And then we just keep working things out. So here we're going to plug 6. 6 squared will be 36. 36 divided by 4 will be a minus 9. 6 and 3 will be 18. And then we keep going. Minus 3. Plug 3 in. 3 squared is 9. So that's going to be minus 9. So that'll be portion quantity minus the quantity, plugging 3 in, and then 3 again plus 9. And then all I do here is just work out each piece. 27 fourths minus 9, we need to get a common denominator. That's going to become minus 9 fourths. Uh, minus 3 minus 6 will actually become plus 3. 9 and 18 will be plus 9. And then finally here, uh, negative 9 fourths uh, plus 9. If you got a common denominator, that would actually be 27 over 4. And then we just put everything together. Put everything together there. Um, actually, I missed a sign here. That will actually be a minus uh, 27 uh, fourths. So then in the end, we just get 3. So the area uh, between these two curves, this little check mark box triangle thing, is 3. And if you did a little bit of algebra, you can confirm this, and I'll leave it for you to do. Uh, but this uh, really looks like a right triangle. In fact, I know it is a right triangle here. So you could find the distance between these two points and the distance between these two points. Uh, so the distance here and the distance here. And you could check the area formula for a triangle to see, uh, see what it works out to be. It should, of course give you the same area.
should of course give you the same error. So that's something if you want to try it on your own, you can, but you certainly don't have to.